Hello class, this is Dr. Fenton. In this video, we are going to cover chapter three, and this continues with job order costing. And what this is going to look at is more computations, but also journal entries for recording the information when we manufacture items using the job order costing system. So let's get started. Now, this chapter shows, again, how to prepare a balance sheet income statement. But before that, we're going to look at more computations, review definitions, look at journal entries, and then see how to prepare a couple of, of uh, old schedules before we actually get to the formal financial statements. First of all, let's look at the vocabulary terms. Let me scroll this back up right there. Okay. And we saw all these terms in the last chapter. And so make sure you review this on your own. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but you know, make sure you, you reread these so you're familiar with everything we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. We saw this chart in the last chapter, and it shows the flow of the cost when we are manufacturing an item and then later selling the, the item. So first of all, when you purchase raw materials that you're going to use in production, then we place the cost into a, a raw materials inventory account. It's a new inventory account. We saw that in the last chapter. Now, these raw materials will stay in this account, like out in the warehouse, and the cost will stay in this actual account until you issue these into production. So you will requisition those and issue those into production. So what we'll do then is transfer the materials to the factory floor and the cost of these materials to the work in process inventory account. You know, again, this is a new uh, inventory account for this, uh, for this course. And so this account, work in process inventory, is used to accumulate all production cost. So raw materials cost will come into this account, as well as direct labor cost will be transferred in, and then overhead will be transferred in. We talked about overhead in the last chapter. We use those predetermined overhead rates to find out the amount we need to attach to jobs. When we did that, we also would, would record those costs into the work in process inventory account. Now, this account, like I just said, is used to accumulate all production costs. Now, when you finish working on an item, then the cost is transferred to the finished goods inventory account. At the same time, the actual goods themselves are transferred from the factory floor to the finished goods warehouse. The finished goods inventory account will be used to keep the cost in here, the cost of the completed items, and the cost will stay in here until we sell them. And when we sell some these items we've produced, then the cost is transferred to the cost of goods sold account. This is the same cost of goods sold account we saw in the previous course. And this last part is showing you that any period cost, such as selling and administrative cost, go straight to the income statement. So again, we accumulate production cost. They eventually end up in the work in process inventory account when we're working on these items and using the materials. Then when we finish working on the item, we transfer the cost to the finished goods inventory account. The cost will sit here until we sell the items. Then we'll transfer those costs to the cost of goods sold account. Here are the journal entries. So when we first purchase raw materials, and again, we haven't used them yet. We've just purchased these. We, we purchased $60,000 in raw materials. We debit raw materials. And I wish the book would, would add in here raw materials inventory because let me back up right here. This is the same account, raw materials inventory, work in process inventory, finished goods inventory. For some reason, the book with these entries to follow, it doesn't add the inventory name out here. I wish it would. So I'm going to go ahead and call it what it is. We debit raw materials inventory for the cost of these materials and we credit accounts payable if we still are going to pay for this later, or we could credit cash if we're paying cash right now. Now, this is going to lead us to an example, a more complete example in a minute. And this is telling us that at the beginning of this month, on April 1st, it had $7,000 already on hand in raw materials. And then during April, we purchased $60,000 more. Okay, so we'll see that show up in just a few minutes. The entry again, to buy materials, raw materials, debit raw materials, inventory, credit accounts payable or cash for the dollar amount. Now, when we 
start using the raw materials. When we requisition the materials and send the materials out to the factory floor, then what we're going to do is debit for the raw materials that are our direct materials, debit work in process for $50,000. Now, I should, should back up and say raw materials can be direct materials or indirect materials. So if you're making, for example, wooden tables, your direct materials would be the wood. Your indirect materials might be the nails or the bolts or whatever you're using to put the wood together. Okay, so, and it could be some glue, right? But the main item that's, that's being used to produce this product, that's the direct materials. So coming out of the raw materials inventory account, we're going to have $50,000 of direct materials and $2,000 of indirect materials. So we debit work in process inventory for the $50,000 of direct materials. Then we're going to debit manufacturing overhead for the indirect materials. These are the lower cost items like the nails, maybe some bolts, maybe some glue or whatever. So if it's indirect material, and you'll be told one way or the other when you work your problems, if it's indirect material, it goes straight to manufacturing overhead. Now, this manufacturing overhead account is not an inventory account. So I did not say inventory here. But work in process is. It is an inventory account. So debit work in process inventory, $50,000. Debit manufacturing overhead, $2,000. And then credit raw materials, because we're taking it out of the raw materials area and taking it out of this account. So credit raw materials inventory, $52,000. So, so this entry is following along with what's happening with these materials. You're starting to use these in production. So now you're transferring the cost from the inventory account to the um, work and process inventory account, you know, from the raw materials inventory account to the work and process inventory account. This is showing what this, what we just talked about. Uh, where are we? Okay, we, we had $7,000 in raw materials inventory to begin with. We purchased 60. Now we're using 52. So this is showing you we're going to credit to lower the raw materials inventory account $52,000. And we keep up with that on this materials requisition form. And the part that ends up being direct materials goes into the work and process account, the work and process inventory account. It goes to the job cost sheet and then to the work and process account. And also over here, job cost sheet for B, 22,000. So the 28 and the 22 add to the 50. So anything that's direct materials will go to those job cost sheets for those jobs. And we're going to debit the work and process account, $50,000. The indirect materials go straight to a separate account, manufacturing overhead. So we're going to debit manufacturing overhead for the actual overhead cost incurred. Now for labor. Again, we use time tickets to see which of our employees out in the factory floor worked on which jobs and what they were working on. So it looks like for April, when you accumulated all the time tickets, you had $60,000 for direct materials. That means employees worked on the product directly. They were on the assembly line and working on the product and that labor was valued at $60,000. We also had $15,000 for indirect labor. And I think right here, yes, the indirect labor going to manufacture overhead represents uh, supervision cost, janitorial work, maintenance, those kinds of things. So that's indirect labor. And that's going to go straight to manufacture overhead, just like your indirect materials did. So from the uh, various timesheets, we end up seeing that $40,000 of direct labor is assigned to job A and $20,000 to job B. So a total of $60,000 is debited to the work and process inventory account. And we go to uh, manufacturing overhead and we're going to debit that account $15,000. So here's the entry. Debit work in process, I'm going to call it inventory, $60,000 total labor, uh, direct labor. Debit manufacturing overhead. 15,000 indirect labor. And then we credit salaries and wages payable, $75,000. So this is how to get the labor cost attached to the correct places uh, 
for all this labor costs we are incurring in production. Now, overhead. Um, remember that all manufacturing costs other than direct materials and direct labor are classified as manufacturing overhead cost. So everything else related to production, except for direct materials and direct labor, that's going to be a manufacturing overhead cost. It looks like here they incur these costs during April, utilities, rent on the factory equipment, and other miscellaneous costs. So $40,000 in total. So here's the entry to record the actual overhead costs that you're incurring. You know, some more that you're incurring. Debit manufacturing overhead and credit accounts payable. Or if you're paying cash, you know you can credit cash also. The main thing is debit manufacturing overhead, $40,000. Then it looks like they accrued $13,000 in property taxes for April. $7,000 in prepaid insurance expired during April for the factory buildings and equipment. Here's the entry to record this. Again, these are actual overhead costs. So debit manufacturing overhead, $20,000. Credit property taxes payable, $13,000. Credit prepaid insurance, $7,000. All this relates to the factory, the factory building, equipment, or whatever. And these are actual overhead costs. And so we're going to debit manufacturing overhead whenever we have these actual overhead costs. Looks like we have some depreciation on the factory equipment. So we don't debit depreciation expense here. I know we did in the previous course, but if it relates to manufacturing, we debit manufacturing overhead for this depreciation cost. And we also, like we did before, um, credit accumulated depreciation. That part doesn't change. But don't debit depreciation expense for depreciation related to the factory whether it's factory equipment, a factory building, or whatever. And again, this is actual, actual overhead cost. Now we need to apply overhead. And this is where we use the estimate. We did this in the previous chapter. So they tell us that uh, the predetermined overhead rate is $6 per machine hour. They've already done a, a lot of work for us, and we're going to use this amount. It looks like during April, we had 10,000 machine hours were worked on job A, 5,000 worked on job B, total of 15,000 machine hours. So how much overhead should we apply to total production during April? It should be the 15,000 total machine hours times the $6 per machine hour rate, that predetermined rate, that gives us $90,000. So the total overhead we are applying to production, you know, both jobs together, total production, for this month of April, $90,000. To record applying overhead, we're going to debit work in process. And again, I'll, I'll go ahead and add inventory here because it is inventory. Debit work in process inventory, $90,000. Credit manufacturing overhead, $90,000. Okay, so this is the entry to apply the overhead. Find out your rate per machine hour or per labor hour, whatever it is, find the allocation units, in this case hours. So $6 per hour times 15,000 hours, 90,000 total overhead cost we are applying to production. And here's the entry, $90,000. 60,000 goes to job A, it had 10,000 hours, and 30,000 of that goes to job B because it had 5,000 hours. But you can see the entry. We debit work in process inventory, 90000 Credit, manufacturing overhead, 90000 So for a minute, look at this manufacturing overhead account. We have the debits here, the credits here. We've gone through these debits, and they total $95,000. What this represents is $95,000 of actual overhead cost for this month. Over here on the right side, the credit side, this shows the amount we applied to production. This is based on an estimated predetermined rate. You know, actual hours we used, but the estimated rate. So the 90,000 is an estimate. The 95 is the actual. The difference is a balance of $5,000. We're going to come, come back to this $5,000 uh, a few pages from now. So keep this in mind. And then the, the, um, 
um, overhead account. I just was explaining this. Whoops. Actuals on the debit side, applied on the credit side. And we have 5000 and that's the debit balance after everything is said and done in that account. And we'll talk about that more in just a few minutes. Okay. Now, non-manufacturing costs, a few more entries. You know, those selling and administrative costs are taken directly to the income statement. Those are period cost, not product cost. So here's the entry to record selling administrative salaries um, for the company. Debit salaries expense. Don't debit work in process. Don't debit manufacturing overhead. These are not related to production. This is like the front offices and the salespeople and so forth. So debit salaries expense, 30000 Credit salaries and wages payable, 30000 Depreciation expense on the office equipment, you know, like the administrative offices, not in the factory building. Here we do go back and use depreciation expense. So don't, don't get confused here. We do use depreciation expense if it's a non-manufacturing depreciation item. Before, when we debited manufacturing overhead and credit accumulated depreciation, that was for the factory equipment, you know, manufacturing equipment. Here... This is for the front office. So we do use depreciation expense as the debit and credit accumulated depreciation. Advertising and other various expenses we might have. Debit advertising expense, 42. Debit other selling administrative expenses. It could be any number of items, 8,000. And accounts payable, or it could be cash, the credit, total of $50,000. Now, the cost of goods manufactured. This represents the cost of the items that we complete during this period. So when a job is completed, the finished output is transferred from the production departments, you know, the factory floor, to the finished goods warehouse. So when that actually happens, when the fiscal units are actually transferred, we also transfer the cost. So here's what we're going to do. If we complete job A, you know, we had two jobs this year, job, I mean this, this month. Job B was not completed by the end of the month. Job A was. Then we take the cost of job A, $158,000, debit finished goods, and then credit work in process. Let me go back to here. Here's job cost sheet A. Um, it was started last month. And the $30,000, if you want to get a little bit more detailed, the $30,000 represents materials, labor, and overhead incurred last month, okay? <clears throat> this month, more materials, more labor, more overhead. So this job cost us a total of $158,000, and we completed it this month. Go back to this entry. Here's the entry. So to record job A being finished, we debit finished goods, and this is another inventory account. So debit finished goods inventory, 158 and credit work in process, 158. It was the only job completed during this month, and so that represents the cost of goods manufactured for the month. So again, the cost of goods manufactured shows us the total cost of the goods that were finished that month. Not all of them that were being worked on, just the ones that were finished. Cost of goods sold, similar to what you had in the previous course. Let me scroll down a little bit. And here um, we have a, we have a thousand gold medallions, uh, so a thousand units of job number A were produced. If we sell 750 of these 1,000, then we don't charge all the 158 thousand dollars to cost of goods sold because we didn't sell all of them. Okay, so just the units we sold, and if we sold, if we produced a thousand, and total cost 158. Then just divide, then that's $158 cost per unit. So if we sell 750 units and our cost to produce these was 158 per unit, multiply, and so we have $118,500 in cost for these units that we sold. So debit cost of goods sold, $118,500, and credit finished goods inventory, $118,500. The selling price hopefully is higher than our cost, so you can see we debited account receivable and credited sales for $225. And here's a review of all the entries we just went through. Okay, so you can take a look at this.
Let's go to the next page. Here we'll talk about the schedules of cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. Now the schedule of cost of goods manufactured, might as well jump right to it. Here it is, sort of lengthy, right in here. Cost of goods sold is down here. This is a new schedule for us in this, in this course. The first thing you need to do is find out how much in direct materials were issued to production. Remember 50,000? Well, let's see how we find it going through the schedule. We started the month off with $7,000 in beginning inventory for raw materials. We purchased 60. So we had a total of $67,000 of raw materials on hand during April. We had 15,000 left over. You count what you had left over. That means we used $52,000 in production. Of the 52, if you remember, 2,000 went to manufacturing overhead. So that's down in the manufacturing overhead number, which really is right in through here, the 90. But anyway, you take out the part that's indirect, that leaves us with $50,000 of direct materials. So we saw those numbers earlier, you know, $50,000 direct materials issued to production. Direct labor, we know is 60. Overhead we applied was 90. Add all these, we get total manufacturing cost for this month, $200,000. Add beginning, beginning inventory. If you remember, job A was already started last month. And so we throw the 30,000 beginning inventory in here. Get a total. Not really even named. It's just a, a, a subtotal. Take away the ending work and process inventory. And this represents the cost of job B we have not completed. So whatever jobs you have not completed, they're still out on the factory floor. All that cost is in the ending inventory for work in process. Okay, so subtract that out and we get $158,000. And that number should look familiar. This is the cost of job A that we completed. All right, so that's the, the schedule of cost of goods manufactured up here. So again, the cost of goods manufactured, this bottom line number here, represents the cost of the units that were finished this, this period, in this case, this month. Now, cost of goods sold, apparently we did not have any, any finished goods inventory, so zero. We bring down, this is the same 158, you can see the arrow here. We bring down 158, cost of goods manufactured, add it, get a subtotal. Take away ending inventory, 39500 and the unadjusted cost of goods sold is 118.5. We saw this uh, with an entry uh, just uh, a few minutes ago. Then what we do is $5,000. We'll talk more about this in a few minutes. This is the under-applied overhead. If you remember that manufacturing overhead T account we saw at the very beginning of the chapter, we had $5,000, the net balance on the debit side. So we had the actual cost on the debit side, the applied cost on the credit side. Actual cost were $95,000, applied $90,000. So the $5,000 of under-applied overhead is added to cost of goods sold, and this adjusted cost of goods sold figure goes to the income statement. So you can call this adjusted cost of goods sold. So whenever you have either over or under-applied overhead, you will, you will adjust the cost of goods sold. So in this case, under-applied, we add it. If this would have been over-applied, we'd subtract it. Okay, that's what you need to know about how to handle the over or under applied overhead at the end of the accounting period. I just this is what I was explaining. Come down to the income statement, the sales, take away cost of goods sold, gross margin. Here are the uh, selling administrative expenses we looked at earlier. Get the total, and so our net operating income is fourteen thousand five hundred. Go to the next page. Now let's look a little bit closer at under and over applied overhead. Um, even though we're not going to dig into this, you know, very deeply, we'll just you know touch on this. Now again, remember, even from the previous chapter, those predetermined overhead rates, they're established usually at the beginning of the, beginning of the year and used all year long. So this is an estimated number. We've estimated total manufacturing costs for the year coming up. We've estimated that allocation base, either machine hours, like in this case, 
or it could be direct labor hours or some other base. Those are estimates. So when we apply overhead, we take this estimated predetermined overhead rate and apply it. Yes, we do apply it on the actual machine hours used for every job, but this is an estimated rate. So we are estimating the overhead as we apply it to production. So I said a minute ago, the, over, the overhead was underapplied by $5,000 because the applied cost of 90 was 5,000 less than the actual cost of 95 for this period. In this production costing approach, you're always going to have at the end of the accounting period, either under or over applied overhead. You're never going to be perfect on these estimates. But whatever you have, the over or under applied overhead, for us, let's just take it to the cost of goods sold account and adjust it. Either adjust it up or down as we need to. Now, all this, don't worry about all these details here. Um, and just the dip, disposition of overhead, we talked about it. Close it to cost of goods sold. So here's the entry. We debit cost of goods sold, 5000 Credit manufacturing overhead, 5000 So this is the entry for what we've already talked about. And we saw this earlier in the um, cost of goods sold statement. And I think that's about it. Don't worry about this part. I'm not going to ask you about closing the over under applied overhead to all three accounts. We are just going to close it to the cost of goods sold account. Anything else? Um, this is just sort of an overview. Um, you know, normal costing means you're using predetermined overhead rates. Um, so again, raw materials, the direct materials go to work in process, indirect to manufacturing overhead. Labor, direct labor goes to work in process. Indirect labor goes to manufacturing overhead. And then we apply using a predetermined estimated rate, the overhead, it goes in the work in process account. So the work in process inventory account is used to accumulate all the cost as, as the products are going through production. When we finish a product, you know, finish a job, we transfer the cost out of work in process inventory into finished goods inventory. The cost will sit there until we sell it. Then we transfer the cost out of finished goods inventory into cost of goods sold. Okay, let's see. And that was in the chapter. So a little bit of detail here, a lot of entries thrown at us. So again, go back and read the chapter, follow all the examples through, and as always, good luck with your studies.